Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Michael in Addington. Farmers will be okay. Come what may. Tell me why. Well, I didn't quite say that, Sheila. Uh, talk about <laughs> twist my words. I'm not twisting twist your words. Yeah. I get a little note about what people are going to say, and it says we'll survive no deal. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, survive. What? The point okay, I'm not Armageddon, is, but no deal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, now, if I go into a supermarket today, okay, I cannot buy a British yoghurt. Everything is dominated by two companies, Danone and Muller. Okay, they're both, one's French, one's German. Now, if you remember a couple of years ago, with the huge issue our milk farmers had with the whole p wholesale price of milk, with the, and there was a third company, Wiseman. Those three companies almost brought down the milk farmers. Do you remember a couple of years ago? Yes, I do. Right, okay. So, we've already got the French and Germans here within, okay? I can't... You're I good. can't... Well, no, all dairy, but no, no Sheila, please... This is break, this is the remaining way, isn't it? I didn't say uh, a yogurt. I said milk products covers a lot of things, not just yogurt. I'm just okay? uh, uh, please calm no, down. No, no, I'm no, just reiterating no. what, what you just said to me. Your, your opening gambit was you're sick of seeing Danone and Muller yogurts. That was your opening statement to me. Did I say I was sick of seeing them? I didn't say I was sick. You said oh, it's all I you can find, which, by the way, isn't true because I can I can tell you the yogurts I get, and it's neither of those. Well, okay, though I shop in Tesco's and Sainsbury's, 90% of their products are Danone and Muller, same as most supermarkets. I get Yo Valley and Rachel's Organic, but there you go. Well, there you go. Check and see who owns Yo Valley. Um, the, the BSC um, problem that we had, do you remember back in the 80s? Yes. Okay, huge bans on um, export of British meat across the world. We survived that. Now, the point I wanted to make, Sheila, is that, you know, you go into a supermarket today, even if I pick up a packet of tomatoes, when you look at them, they're grown in, in the Netherlands, they taste of absolutely nothing. We're in a situation now where the farmers are really under the command of these huge conglomerates. You know, the French and the Germans are already here. They're dictating to our farmers already what their price of milk's going to be over the next few years. It's not right. It simply isn't right. The farmers will survive this and they'll be in a much better position. We should be buying our fruit and veg from places like Kenya, Uganda, where it tastes so much nicer. The, the, the awful stuff we're committed to buying from the EU at the moment tastes of nothing. And I know the Spanish, because I used to live there, funnily enough, all the exported tomatoes we get are their second best. You know, we're simply in a position now where our farmers, <laughs> our government have let them been run shod, you know, been walked over by all these other companies, and it ain't right. It really isn't right. What about the, uh, it, you know, I can hear you're angry about this, Michael, but what you say we should get our food from, or our, which, what, what did you say we should get from Nigeria? Uh, our no, vegetables I, and our fruit. Uh, all our fruit and veg really should come from Africa. Well, th but think, you know? of th think of the, the carbon footprint of that, just for a second. What, what do you mean, the carbon footprint? The, the, the transportation of that food and the refrigeration of that food when, it, when it's coming, compared to our, our near neighbours in, in, a, in a trading organisation that we are in with them. I mean, do, do you honestly think that makes sense? Well, my point of view is, Sheila... Or is it all about taste? Idea. It's about no, taste. It's, no, it isn't. It's all about helping the economies of these countries that deserve some help. They provide, instead of giving our money to a, you know, a bunch of crooks, I would love my money to go to all these African countries that produce beautiful food. Give these people a chance. Give their farmers a chance, because I'm sure they'll produce something a little bit better than a Dutch greenhouse. So it isn't that you only want to see British food in British supermarkets, it that you, it's that you don't want to see European food in British no, supermarkets. No, I want to see tasty food. I don't want something that's grown in these, you know, these huge mass-produced Dutch chemical, um, chemical-free greenhouses they use. It's, it's not real farming, and they taste of nothing. 
All right, well, you know, stay, stay with us, Michael. EU, her defence in, in her defence, she misleads and lies over Brexit's true vote to leave. Michael Mortham Abbey on this. Mike, you're on the radio. Good yeah. morning. Good, good morning, Nick. Hello, yeah. sir. I've, I've never been so angry. I, oh, I really, Lord. I can't remember the last time I was this angry. Right. We've got this, these, these, these self-serving, self-important bloody MPs one of them gets called a few nasty names and oh. suddenly they want a load of coppers to, to protect them from names. R well, we, no. the population, right. on a weekly basis, are being stabbed and beaten to death and we're told we don't need more coppers. Well, I, I don't know. I think probably that many police chiefs would say they would like more coppers. It's the government that says there isn't the money there, of course. Ex exactly. And it's not the chief police police who are asking for more police to defend, to, to protect but, the MPs. It's the MPs, the but, people who make the rules, who can give us more police. But Mike, would you really not want to afford protection to a woman who's merely doing her job, expressing her views, and she finds herself surrounded by a group of, I think it's probably seven or eight men, some of whom are suggesting she needs to be raped? Do you not going to afford uh, any... No, no, that, 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 is that is a disgrace. Mm. But you know what? Go people on. want to put themselves in the public arena. Well, You've not... got to expect this. No, no, no. Few, Hang on. Nick, Nick, no, not, not, no. To the, not to this level. No, I think they should no, have been no, nicked. I, agree. I think they I should agree. have been arrested. I said that, I agree. Right. No woman should ever be threatened with rape. None of them. Right, but not... That is, that is disgraceful. But, but... That, well, I don't see there is a but here, Mike. Well, no, I'm, I'm sorry, Nick, there is a but. Because it wasn't about her... It, my complaint isn't about her it's, being... I, I know, it's about the level of, or lack of protection that's afforded to regular people. I hear what you're saying. They are in a difficult uh, situation, and I sense, Mike, thank you, I sense this is a conversation that will carry on here on LBC, but not with me for now. Vinny's call from Stratford uh, to talk about how we do our politics and how we keep it non-violent, how we keep it lawful, Vinny. Hello, can you hear me, Sheila? Loud and clear, fire away. Hi, um, before I, I start as to why everything that has been said is absolute rubbish so far, um, I have to point out which um, you, you, you yourself fall into that mainstream problem of being um, a full-time professional liar. I mean, you know full well, you know right from wrong, whether you're religious or not, whether you exercise false morality or not, you know right from wrong. So let's not pretend that the vote wasn't cast and you aren't actually assisting North Africa and the Middle East to completely decimate our sovereignty. So let's move on to Anna Subri now, because you seem to have... Well, a I've been busy. Right. You have. No, you certainly have. So has the rest of LBC, apart from, apart from Nigel. Um, now, Anna... Which Nigel well, are you I talking about? I the only one worth talking about, Nigel Farage. Oh, okay, because we've um, got a few Nigels if, here, so I just wanted to check. If I, um, if I was to spend an hour on LBC hosting, I could completely obliterate what you're saying with multiple Nazi accusations. I myself have been called a Nazi for daring to point out anti-white agendas or, or problems with sovereignty. I have got whole articles on myself. James Goddard is the chap that was calling Anna Subri a Nazi. Mm. There are organisations called Punch a Nazi by Antifa. I can show you a video and others where I have been stabbed. I have been stabbed by Antifa. This will never be covered. I have spoken to the BBC. It's been covered now because you, you're telling me. You, oh, sorry? It's been covered now, isn't it? Because you're telling me and I'm sorry that I happened see. Be, be, being clever isn't going to assist... I'm not being clever. Sort of things, I see. I'm not but being clever. Anyway, I'm telling you, you're live on national radio describing what happened uh, to you at the hands of Antifa, alleging what happened to you at the hands of Antifa. Yes, I, not alleged. Go for it. Your videos, but okay. Anyway, so the point being, the Nazi word is used consistently by the left. It, I mean, Owen Jones, for instance, the pathetic um, so-and-so, he calls everyone a fascist, everyone's a Nazi, it is the left wing narrative and just because it's happening back to yourselves the crying starts to happen yourselves. unanimously yes absolutely you, you would definitely fall under the uh, problem of left-wing globalism uh, the agendas in which you are fully aware of um, are the reasons that you make your wage packet. It's nothing to do with morality. You detest well, so this you, country and its I, people. I don't detest this country. I love this country and I love and I love most of the people and in terms of feel, feel a sense of attachment and affection for most of the people I disagree. in this country. Well, well, I, I, I get to say how I feel about my country, Paul. You don't. Why do you get... My name's Vinny. Uh, Apologies, why, Vinny. Name's Vinny Sullivan, by the way. Feel free to Google it. And you'll find plenty of Nazi, um, uh, you know, accusations. All rubbish. Um, but oh, it's terrible. James it's terrible. The way you are. It, have you, have it, you it, tried to prosecute anybody you for slandering legal, you? Have it, you? No, because I'm not a brass. Because on the right, we don't cry <laughs> over spilt milk. But if if Vinny, I decided to, Vinny, I could Vinny, write up thousands if, of hate crimes. If 
if you have been slandered, uh, mm -hmm. prosecute the slanderer, I would. No, no, absolutely not. That's the game. And if you can't handle the game, don't take part. It's not a game, now, the it's the are, law. The left are exercising a form of what would appear to the outside, if you're not well-educated, to be Nazism. It seems like the Fourth Reich. Germany, one of the reasons that Germany... Uh, that the EU was assembled, among many, was to stop any one country becoming too powerful. Lo and behold, Germany is the superpower of Europe. Lo and behold, they're going to get their own army. So once again, what we're seeing is Hitler's reality becoming Angela Merkel's reality, backed by people like Macron and advertised by people like yourself. All right, I've just seen something on, I think it's, yes, on your Twitter feed, suggesting that gay people are pushing degeneracy and, and are a pro... No, no, no? no what it says, read the whole thing. I am. Read the whole thing. No, you're not. Does it say LGBT? LGBT is not about gay people or rights. It's a pro-Palestinian, oh, so labour-loving, oh, Antifa-ridden. Just explain it to me. Oh, so only a moment ago it was about gay people, when it's in fact about the organisation which uses communism to pretend it cares about gay people. No, you, will you that, clarify fact, for me what that means? When you say hashtag LGBT, I think that, that means gay people, does it not? No? No, it doesn't. Not at all. Is it, are you saying that, that they, that's the only description? The people that organise Black Lives Matter, LGBT, they care not for the matters. They use socialism, they use communism as a false pretense to take out their jealousy of people that rejected them in their youth. They're people that are jealous of confident, wealthy or happy people and they uh, so, um, identify as these socialist lunatics. They don't care about black lives, they don't care about gay people or transgenders, they are communist, jealous lunatics. OK, Vinny, thanks for your call, Vinny in Stratford. Let's start in Wales. So many good things do. Stan's in Swansea. Stan, what businesses did he mean it would be good for, if not his own? It's only that a remainder that could put forward your case today, James. It's a in question. This respect, it's a question, not a case. In this respect, if he didn't mean his own business, what businesses do you think he meant? In this respect, James, that you... I, I will keep created, asking you that question, but you, you carry on not answering it for a while, just out of fairness. Oh, well, you, you, uh, you and the rest of the remainers, and I include the PM, have created a... <coughs> regime of uncertainty and the first thing that a business needs whether it's small large or global is certainty we don't even know because of dominic grieve and co if we're going to be leaving on the 29th of march yes and, the, and, the, and this is the fault of people who said we shouldn't leave so how, <laughs> how, how just run me through that logic will you first then oh certainly okay so so you and the rest of the Ramonas, who want a people's vote, are fascist and the fascist-like tendencies that you've got. Let's calm, you let, let's, let, let, let's, let's calm down, because I'm sure you've got some really good points to make, not just some hollow insults. And, and let's focus on two questions, then. If you don't want to answer the one about which businesses James Dyson was talking about, you've used that phrase, will of the people. When the two chairmen of Vote Leave, Boris Johnson and Michael Gove, voted against each other last week, which one was representing the will of the people? In, 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 no, but uh, which one? Which of the two leaders of Vote Leave? In 2016, James. You, that's two questions you can't answer, Stan. Why have you rung in? Why? Because day after day, <laughs> you're day after proud day. of the newspaper. Um, and that means yes, but now, truth. now you're just being silly again. I know well, then Pravda is the Russian word for truth. So let's look at the two questions you can't answer and then reflect on why you can't answer them. The first one is, when James Dyson said that Brexit would be good for British businesses, he clearly didn't mean his own business, so which businesses do you think he meant? No, and the second, and the second one stable, is... In a stable environment. And the second one is, when the two chairmen of Vote Leave voted against each other, which one represented Leave voters? Uh, I'm not aware that they did. Uh, right, okay, well, Michael Gove, Michael Gove voted in favour of Theresa May's deal with the e European Union and Boris Johnson voted against it. So which one of those two chairmen of Vote Leave represented Leave voters? It depends where you draw the line. Some well, draw it wherever now, you want. Just give me an answer to at least one question I'm asking some today. Some people now believe that the only way we're going I, to get out is to accept... Yes, but I'm only talking Theresa to you. May's so deal. so who, who represented Leave voters? The man who voted for Theresa May's deal or the man who voted against it? Both of them, of course, being leaders of the Leave campaign. Well, I'm firmly, firmly in the Johnson camp. Right, so the uncertainty caused by turning down the only deal that has been offered to the British people 
is the fault of the people who supported it, not the people who rejected it. That's quite an odd place you've ended up in, Stan. No, I haven't ended up in any odd place because you've got a Remainer at the top of government. Yeah, but you, you know that eventually repeating these sort of fatuous, meaningless phrases... What, well, like the people's vote? Is that a fatuous um, uh, conundrum, if ever I heard well, well, You know what it means. Had, you, well, you know, I, I you know, know what it means, means Stan. We're going to ignore but why, again, we've now moved... But we've just and established... That, that oh, Stanley, day. we've just established that there's not any argument that 17.4 million people are being represented because the two leaders of the campaign voted different ways on the only deal that's been put to them. So that's why I kept asking you. I thought you understood why it was such a brilliant question, but obviously it took a while for the penny to drop. You do now... Of those 17.4 million people, did the vote leave chairman who supported Theresa May's deal speak for them, or did the vote leave chairman who rejected Theresa May's deal speak for them? The silence is, 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 is great because, of course, we don't, you don't know... No, you fill the silence just with an answer. The privacy of the ballot box. You fill the silence with an It wasn't the privacy of the ballot box. They walked through the lobbies in the House of Commons, mate. It was on television. No, no, I'm talking about when we voted to leave. Yeah, so, so you can't then talk the about... If you can't move... Oh, Stan, European you can't move Union. from talking about the will of the people to then saying, well, we don't know what the will of the people is because of the privacy of the ballot box. We, we know what it, what it was. It was the... the we know what it was. Leave. It was a lot of in, in, um, unkeepable promises that contradicted each other and cancelled each other out, which is why the whole campaign has ended up with the two leaders of it voting against each other on a very simple bill put before Parliament. So that's not gone brilliantly. Let's go back to the question that we started with. If James Dyson wasn't talking about his own business when he said that Brexit would be brilliant for British business, what businesses do you think he was talking about? The 95% of businesses in Britain that aren't affected by Europe. The 95% of businesses that aren't affected by Europe are the ones that are going to be better off when we leave the European Union. They're going to be no worse off, and in fact... Well, that's not really a campaigning... That that's not really a campaigning... That's not really a campaigning slogan. A made-up number of businesses that will be no different from how they were before. No. Uh, you, Stan, it's not me. You, you Stan, like Stan, people, Stan. I don't, mate, you just complained about the silence. That's the opposite of talking over people. I, I can't do this anymore. It's, it, it's beginning to feel sadistic. But just take this thought away with you. It's not me you're cross with, Stan. It's James Dyson, and then it's yourself. It's 1027. Nation that could be greater. Now, uh, lots of you think that the extra greatness comes from leaving the European Union. Others think it comes from staying in the European Union. Are we great? Will we be great in or out? Michael in Taunton, hello. Hi, Sheila. Good to speak with you again. You too. Um, it doesn't make any difference whether we stay in or come out as to our so-called greatness. Because if we look at history, we have to look and analyse what did make us great. And for our nation now, for many of us, that's not relevant. When we look back at what made the West great, not only us, America, Australia, and those nations, whether you like it or not, the truth is Christianity. So when Mrs May talks about British values, which is the PC word to use, she should be saying Christian values, because that's what this nation was once based on in the Ten Commandments and our legal system, and it worked, and it worked better than anything else the world has ever seen. Christian or Judeo-Christian? Both. Old and New Testament, so it's Judeo-Christian. Mm. Um, so, but we've rejected that now. And there's a book in the Bible that tells us the consequence of that. We get turned over to a darkened, depraved mind. Like uh, how, okay, hang on a sec. How have we rejected it? Because at heart, our nation now is atheistic and quite militant, actually. And true Christianity is scoffed at more in our land now, more than ever before. There are actually people getting disciplined for praying for people in the workplace. Um, and and if, you, if you dig a little bit deeper... Christian street preachers being arrested regular. They haven't committed hate crimes, but that's thrown out there very easily. So now we pay the price. We but you've also great. got, just to, you know, you, you touch on important things, but we've also, you've, we've, we also have a head of state who's also the head of the Church of England. Our, yeah. our national life at that level, I mean, our national life 
is very much expressed in Christian churches and Christian cathedrals and Christian settings. Um, sure. Not exclusively, and, and thankfully, often in a very ecumenical way with the invitation to Catholics, to Muslims, to, or to Jews, to, 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 to leaders of the, of the other faiths as well, um, which I think is an important social cohesion move. Um, uh, it doesn't have to dilute Christianity to be welcoming to other faiths. Um, uh, but, but equally, you have um, the current foreign secretary doing, I think, brilliant work on the persecution of, Christian, of Christians around yeah. the world. So it's not quite yeah. the dark picture you paint, is it, Michael? Well, well, Sheila, it is, actually. The reality is because, first and foremost, we should start in our own country, on our own doorstep. We're very, very good at looking elsewhere where Christians are persecuted, but we don't want to look under the rug what's happening in our own country, which I've touched upon. Also... But, te- I'll, but, te- I'll, but, I'll but, let- but, but what kind of Chris- what kind of persecution are you talking about? I get what you're saying about you talk- there was a situation where a nurse or a, 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 a healthcare worker said she would pray for somebody, and the, the patient took offence. Is that the story you're you're alluding to? That's one of them. Also, yeah, a religious a symbols. Nurse who gave a Bible that a Muslim yeah. lady she worked with asked for. She's disciplined. Mm. You have a Christian magistrate who, in a private meeting, voiced his opinion that he felt the best place for a child to be raised was with a man and a woman. Mm. He was cast out from his position. Um, and and this, like I said, if you look, it goes on and on. Also, the the point about well, other faiths. The and thing religion, is, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it, the last case, the last example you gave was, was interesting. I seem to recall having a, a conversation for an hour on it here on LBC. Um, that is where uh, theological and religious belief clashes with the law of the land, and that's a, that's a discussion to be had. And when and when a man or woman who is the law of the land um, says that, you you get that that's a massively sensitive area, don't you? It is. It is. But on both but sides, Sheila, not just your is, side, yeah. on both sides. But when the law of man. Gets called and called the law of the land clashes with divine law. It is our job as Christians to challenge the upper magistrates, the higher magistrates, and we as the lower magistrates to call them out and say, "No, this is what our nation was once based on." So, on, on, on the all right, standards. on the basis that you're you're seeing my question about. Britain's greatness through a, a, a religious and theological prism. Uh, uh, stop me if I'm wrong. Um, Let's go to a degree. Okay. Um, it, do you accept that actually society now is more complicated than that? Society now is paying the price for taking the course we've taken against the God who rules all the universe. And, and so now... It's, it, I mean, honestly, are people trying to tell us that things are getting better? Look at the knife crime, look at the drug problems, look at the, the, the paedophilia, the sexually transmitted diseases. In the church, yeah, the paedophilia in the church amongst other places. So, yeah, it, it's not an absolute straight line, is it, your, your argument, Michael? I, I take the points that you make about Christian per, uh, persecution and about instances that absolutely need our focus in, in the workplace if somebody loses their job because they've said something Christian. Um, I, I take your point. I'm not sure how it really links to um, the, our, our membership of the European Union, but thanks for your thoughts all the same. Paul's in Manchester. Paul, what would you like to say? Uh, it was just about the comment that you made about bar, bar, black sheep, and it was a seed, and by removing it, you prevent that seed growing into a tree. Well, I didn't you think actually... that was a seed. I, I'm not sure the bar, bar, black sheep thing ever happened, but, but I'm thinking more about when people felt that they were being there was an overreaction to something that could be construed as racist. That was designed to... It was almost like um, uh, better safe than sorry. All right, maybe that bit wasn't actually racist, but I'd rather not take the risk. So that, that's what I think political correctness at its most controversial became. Yes, and those, let's not take the risk, are not just that one example. There are many, many, many examples. And what that's actually having an impact on is within society, people feel as though they are constrained. No, 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 no Paul, you've misunderstood. It's, it's, they were constrained, but they're not constrained anymore, which is why we've ah. got racists camping outside Parliament. It's why we've got Liam Neeson thinking that, he, that there, was no, there was no pause or no need for, for um, discretion when he was recalling the time he went out to batter a black man for no reason whatsoever. This is what happens after political correctness has, no, has gone into retreat. Still exists. Yes, no, but there's not enough of it, is there? Uh, mm, otherwise we wouldn't be seeing racism there, on no, the rise. There's far, there far too much of it. Oh, um, okay. Political correctness still, still exists. Give me an example. Just, uh, 
a minority of people are now coming out from, with, from underneath the umbrella of political correctness. So and give, like give me an said, example of where it is now. What, political correctness? Yeah. Um, like you, you were going uh, about uh, an example of um, you, you, you didn't believe you couldn't walk down the street carrying a flag. Um, well, that is actually true, because I actually witnessed no, it, somebody no, being it's, it's, arrested for carrying a flag. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you might have seen someone being witness, being arrested for a public order offence who happened to be carrying yes, a flag, but they weren't... Yes, on the basis of carrying a flag. But, but that's not now, true, how, you how, see. This is, this is the victimhood well, narrative of... OK, can you, can you send me the details by email? Yeah, Tell me where it was, the, the arrest it was actually, number... It was actually in the Oldham <sighs> Town Centre. OK, and what um, was the flag? Uh, and it was a Union Jack. OK, so someone got arrested for waving a Union flag. You better ring yes. Buckingham Palace, mate, because the Metropolitan Police is going to be around in 20 seconds flat. And, th and there you have it, a perfect example. So your argument, Paul, just to be clear, would be that political correctness drives these sort of feelings underground and that's unhealthy. No, my, my argument is that it actually makes people feel as though they are being imposed upon. And that's why they end up ringing radio stations and telling lies. No, which then... I'm not telling a lie. Of course you're telling a lie. No one has ever been arrested for carrying a union flag. Otherwise, every regiment in the country would be in Wormwood Scrubs. And, of course, this notion about, oh, no, it drives it underground, it drives it underground. Where do you want your sewage? In your sitting room or underground? This is a almost certainly redundant exercise in correcting the lies and deliberate misinterpretations that will now be springing up around Donald Tusk. Um, he has suggested there's a special place in hell for people who promoted Brexit without having any plan at all on how to deliver it safely. Crucial words there, safely. Ah, um, and I don't think any of them had a plan, actually, and it's an astonishing, real not a realisation, we've kind of known this for ages, but only as this ultimatum approaches, this deadline approaches, do you, do you realise the sheer scale of the madness? Who, who, who had a plan? Whose plan did you vote for? Vivian's in Redhill. Vivian, who had a plan? Well, for um, taking my call. You're welcome. We all had a plan. There was a, let's start from the beginning of uh, the movement to leave the European Union. There was a plan to leave the European Union. We've built a campaign. We've gained support for that campaign. And now you've taken us out of the conversation and a lot of the people that have gathered in support of this campaign are finding themselves without the information to support the move that they've just ultimately decided to do, which I applaud them for doing. I, I, okay. You'll, you'll have so, to forgive me. I don't, I don't understand what you just said. OK, well, you, what, what are you interested in? What part of the whose plan, plan did you, like did you vote? Whose plan did you vote for? The European Union, based on the information that we all know is very true about the United Kingdom and its position and its critical position in the world. And how it's uh, priceless yes, but who's, who's to who, the who, common market. Who, whose description of what would happen after leaving did you that's vote just, for? That's just abductive logic, James. No, that's what a plan got, is. Uh, Donald Tusk no, is talking about so delivering... What are you worried about? Deliver worried about a tariff on, the, on UK products coming out to the European Union. The European Union doesn't have any negotiation. I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to have this conversation if, it, if, if I ever ask that question, then you can ring okay, in, you can ring in and answer board, it. We've been talking about uh, Whose plan? Morning. Who would give me the name of a person whose plan you voted for? I voted to leave the I European guess, well, Union. I, I think we've all gathered that, but the point yeah, about... and well, what that means no, so is not being conveyed to your listeners because you're not listening to what I'm saying. I am, and but the question is, whose okay, plan? Like to know. Whose plan did you vote for? Give me it's, the name. It's not a plan, James. It's, it's the... Well, I'm talking about plans. It's a negotiation process that we've agreed to enter into. Yes, so whose plan did you vote the for? market to enter the free market, and what plan is that? That is common the market is a free market. The common market is a free market, mate. The common market it's is regulated it's, it's with a cat with with. A OK, so outside of the common market, outside of no, the no, European listen, Union... No, no, I'm not here to have a row with you. I just want you to give me the name right. of the Brexiter okay. whose plan you voted for. The Jacob Rees-Mogg plan. And when did he explain what that was? The Jacob Rees-Mogg plan explains in very obvious detail... But before the, the referendum, when did he explain oh, what his well, plan was? I don't see you're not getting to any point. You're not letting any information come forward, James. You're just stopping me whenever I talk, mate. It's well, ridiculous, and you keep doing it to I, everyone that comes on the show, I, mate. You've got and me it's there. And really winding us all up, yeah, son. Clearly, yeah, son. Are you listening to me? Yes, yes. James. So whose yes, plan... Please, you voted please, for... Please stop talking for a second, you, please. You voted yeah. for the Jacob Rees-Mogg plan, but you can't tell me what it is. OK, James, let's talk about... Let's talk about hedge funds, yeah? Let's talk about... No, let's not. Let's just talk about whose plan you voted. Vivian, it's not me you should be cross British with. British overseas 
territories. It's okay? not we me that lied to you. Over the top of those territories, we control what comes in and out of those areas of the world, okay? There's no hostage situation of the UK. We are in holding all the cards. Vivian, it's, okay? not, it's not my fault you're so cross. It's no, not, it's no, not my not fault. Angry, it's James. not happening. You're upset that you're not able to listen to the reality of the situation that you're trying to put forward on the radio, mate. That doesn't... We that's just the words. the going into and out of Ireland, son. Yeah, they can't do anything... They can't put the lights on in Ireland without making... ...of us, bank. So whose yeah, plan we, did you we, vote for? We voted to leave the European Union. Mate, I'm going to... I'm, I'm going to leave it. James, Vivian, okay, I'll well, talk... I, I've enjoyed... To to okay. and I appreciate you letting me on the show. Yeah. And I really do appreciate You've done a great job in making a balanced debate by allowing this. So, okay, but no, but I haven't, though, Vivian, because uh, they'll, they'll be queuing up now plan. on... Vivian, it's mate... The Jacob mog plan, mate. Yeah. You're and when was that first explained? Thank you very much for the time, yeah? All right, off you, off you go. Mate, I, I'm, I'm really sorry to break this to you, but your lot now will be queuing up to claim that you were specially selected because of your... Um, well, you, you just go on Twitter and have a look at the words that they use, Vivian. Whose plan did you vote for? I voted for the plan that Jacob Rees-Mogg never made public, James. And now I'm really cross with you, James. Take care, mate. Jeffrey's in Chelsea. Jeffrey, why has Chris Grayling got a job? Uh, because people like you keep him in the job. Because all you can do is <laughs> run down this country. You've got no clue about what the fact remains. Yeah. Is that a policy was put in place by the Conservative government to enact the vote. The yes. vote was to leave the EU, yes. not to provide thousands of ships just because people like you think there's going to be Armageddon when we leave the so EU. So why James. did he sign that? Why did he do the deal then? He did the deal because basically any prudent and <laughs> proper government, whether it be Labour, Conservative, Liberal, whoever's in government, yes. they have to do what's called the contingency, James, because but it, people wh why like is it, you... If he's prudent and proper... Me, you're going to let me speak. It, well, I'm not, I'm, if he's prudent and proper, why, why has the deal fallen apart? It hasn't fallen apart, James. It's purely and simply because at the end of the day... So the deal's still in place, is it, Are you Jeffrey? going to keep talking over me, James? Well, if Are you lie, public, I am. Of course I am. Jeffrey, if you, you lie, if you lie, criticism. Jeffrey, you will be... No, There's a million no, places in the British media. Jeffrey, you just said the deal was still in place. Could you just refer me to the evidence criticism. that the deal is still in place? Could you just refer me to where you're getting that from? Excuse me, sir? You're excused. Now tell me where you're getting government. the evidence from. You just said the deal was still in place. The one that was announced on Saturday morning to no longer be in place. So I, I, I might, I've been on air for two hours. I might have missed the news. Where did you get the information that the deal was still in place, that the prudent and proper Chris Grayling um, arranged with Seaborne Freight, Jeffrey? I don't know what kind of education you got, James, but you clearly don't have any manners. I haven't interrupted you when no, you No, you lied, so Jeffrey. You said the deal was still in place. So pr refer me to the evidence for the deal that the government announced was off on Saturday being on again. I, I, and then I don't have to interrupt you anymore. Your listeners will draw their own conclusions. They already have, Jeffrey. So finally, just where did you get the news that the deal was back on? Can't wait till we leave the EU and people like you stop crying. Yes, where did you get the news that the deal was back on? Where did you get the news, James, <laughs> that we don't have any contingencies in place? Well, when they announced on Saturday that the contingency they put in place had been called off, but you've told me that it hasn't been called off, and I'm, I'm looking for the evidence. So you believe that there's only one contingency No, I'm talking in about place. the one deal that you I just said that. was back on. Now, either say, I'm sorry, James, I made a boo-boo, or tell me where you got your evidence from. I would never apologise to people like you. No, I know you won't, Jeffrey. which is why you end up getting humiliated on national radio. Because all you, ha you, all you had to say was sorry. No. No? If you look at, if, if, so, if you look for at the final time, Jeffrey the said letters. the deal was still on, the deal that, that um, Chris Grayling signed with Seaborne for eight. Jeffrey and Chelsea says the deal is still on. Jeffrey's proof comes now. You are Muppet. And that, my friends, is Brexit. Uh, let's talk to Stu in West Bromwich. Hello, Stu. Yeah, I'm not in West Bromwich, Sheila. I'm... Uh, trying to get to Dover, but I've just been listening to your, your show. Are you from West Bromwich? Yeah, I'm from oh, Dudley originally. We're on the right track. West, <laughs> up in the black country. Okay. Um, I'm just thinking, the perspective in the West Midlands totally differs from the area where you are down here. It's uh, everybody that I speak to just wants to get out. They're not interested in Theresa May and the future. They're not interested in what Parliament think. 
All they're saying is, we voted out, get out. Like the gentleman said before, um, the ideological argument. It isn't an ideological argument. It's the result of the referendum. That's simply it. We voted out. Get out. Stop prevaricating with all these chasing tails, with all these MPs telling us what what we should be doing, what's best for us, as usual, you know. So wait, do, you, I presume you voted to leave, I'm, I'm assuming. I did, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, when you, what, and, and answer what Dr Philip Lee said earlier on, I don't know whether you heard it, but he, he essentially has said that uh, leave, vote leave, the, the actual word, uh, was a no deal Brexit. But the camp, yeah, but, the, but, but yeah, okay. But the campaign uh, was a have your cake and eat it Brexit. We can get any version of Brexit we like. It's going to be so easy. We'll have the what the fastest trade deal in history. La 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 la. And and none of that has turned out to be the truth. Yeah, but did you read the uh, campaign leaflet that Cameron sent out at eleven million, eleven million quid? Because we did, and it said no customs union, no freedom of movement. We get our sovereignty back. We get our fishing back. None of that's talked about now. It's just the second referendum all the time down here, as far as I can see. I'm an ex-soldier as well. I served in Northern Ireland and the Soldier F campaign. I don't want to go off track, but everybody's ignoring that as well. It's a massive, angry bunch of people. Do you mean the soldier that's being charged or facing charges for murder? Yeah, allegedly. It was 34, 40 years ago. How's that going to stand up in court? Why take him to court? He's 70 years old. Massive anger there is all around the country. And they're ignoring it. All they talked about last who's, week. Who's ignoring it? We've, we've talked about it on this programme. I've seen it spoken about on TV. I've seen a report of a big campaign no, in, in Lancashire there's about been nothing, it. nothing. Nothing well, on I, the no, Those are just things north. I've done and seen myself. So there's been something. No, there's been nothing up north. I'm sorry. If, if it's been on here for a couple of minutes, you're lucky. Oh, no, I'm sorry, but I, are you wrong? I'm afraid because I because the Lancastrian campaign for Soldier F I saw in in the northwest of England when I was up there, as I am a lot. Well, fair enough, but the majority of ex-veterans are now and on all the Facebook pages are absolutely fuming, and there's going to be massive marches next Saturday all over the country in big cities, and you'll see it. But whether it's reported or not, to move point, isn't it? Is so. that is that connected to Brexit in your mind in some way? Yes, it is because it's the people that are angry about a certain subject. We've had climate change for the last two weeks, which most people don't care about, other than those people who haven't got a job in London who can afford to stand around with a plastic bag around them, shouting at us about the weather. Because all it is is weather at the end of the day, to most people. This is my opinion, I, you might disagree, but I'm just saying it from a perspective of living in a black country where people call a spade a spade, and they're just Disgra it's disgraceful that the Brexit people aren't being heard. All right, Stu, thanks very much indeed for your call. Stu, in, uh, well, from West Bromwich, on his way to Dover. Thank you to him for his call. I think that when the comments were sent to me, they were transcribed and sent to me by a journalist, I think my initial feeling was just this is just the same man doing the same thing. He's only got one shtick, uh, you know, that he dines out on having a go at me. That's all he's got. And then for, I was actually in the bank and uh, the, the person I was talking to in the bank um, said to me, are you all right? Because I was having to respond on text message. Mm -hmm. And I just, I looked up and I said, yeah, you yeah, know, I'm absolutely fine. And I realised that I did what all women do in these situations is that I'd been putting a brave face on it and pretending that it was all fine and that I could cope. And it sort of dawned on me that for four years, essentially, this man has made a career out of harassing me and I felt harassed. I felt, I felt like, how can somebody say that they would rape me if forced and be a legitimate candidate in an election? It was one thing when he was just some idiot off the internet with a load of bros following him. It's a different thing when he's standing on the same platforms that I'm standing on, that he will potentially go to a parliament himself as an elected representative when he said these things and I just cannot believe our system is so weak at the moment that that's allowed to happen. And when you got home I think you did cry didn't you? Yeah I mean I cried actually in the street in Birmingham City <laughs> Centre you? Um, just because I felt like the enormous weight of years and years and years of abuse um, and I felt 
It's not that I'm frightened for the credible threat to me, actually. I'm not frightened that anyone's going to hurt me. I can't... So you don't fear for your physical safety? I can't live my life fearing mm. for my physical safety, otherwise I would do nothing. And I really like living my life like a normal person. Mm. So I, I don't let that creep in very often. Paul from Ilford, you are worried about freedom of speech, James. In what sense, in what context? Well, most definitely. How, how are you doing, Sheila? Okay. Yes, um, what, what's been going on recently is that um, people with a certain view, i.e. conservative views, uh, oh. small c, um, are being shut down on uh, places like YouTube and they're having, they're being unpersoned, as, as it's being known. Um, unpersoned? This is a real problem. What happens when you're I mean, unpersoned? Basically, um, all your videos are taken down. Um, uh, also, they can on actually... What, on by Facebook? Um, by different, yeah, all these different social media companies. So you've got YouTube are doing it, uh, Inst uh, uh, Instagram are doing it. And also, it's even stretching as far as um, other things, like uh, being able to get Ubers and things like that. Uh, this is what's happening in, in the States right now. What, the people, uh, people are being blacklisted from being in an Uber, something like that? Things like that, yes, it, this is how serious it's getting, at, it's right. getting out of hand. Well, can I ask you what kind of views you would class as conservative views? Because because conservative views, well, it covers a lot, doesn't it? What, what do you mean when you say small c conservative views? Give me an example. Um, populist, populist, traditionalist, um, you know, um, um, fam family orientated views, um, Christian views, um, things like that. Well, I. Uh, it, is a, it is a fact that well, um, certain I... Christian channels have been taken down off YouTube. What are they so, saying? Uh, what are they saying? These Christian channels? That, because that, that's the thing. See, if, if anyone who, who anyone who's got an opinion that doesn't align itself with the progressive liberals. They are being taken out. No, 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 hang on, hang on, James. It's interesting that you said that because I'm quite traditional in my in my outlook on life, and I'm a Catholic, and uh, it, I don't get shut down. I've got a daily radio program, um, and it, well, when you say people are being shut down for their views, if 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 a if a Christian channel is being shut down, I'm just keen to know what it was broadcasting. Well, you, you'll probably find that it was due to something along um, their opinion on gay marriage or something like that. You, you, usually, as I say, these sort of progressive topics, well, where, it, where they fall out of uh, line with those, and the people in Silicon Valley are very much predominantly uh, progressive, uh, they basically... Uh, uh, I'm person you. But, also, but you're, you're using all kinds things. of little buzzwords here that, that, that strike me as a, a kind of, I don't know... A progressive, unperson, traditionalist, populist. It, it, they, they sound well, like they things. Like used to describe what's, what's going on. Well, I the mean, thing is, the thing is, it, routine. Well, let, let's focus on Britain for a second, uh, rather than Silicon Valley. Routinely, on radio and television, and online and on social media, here in the UK, I frequently see debates and hear debates um, about uh, gay marriage and about whether it is the same as heterosexual marriage and r people with religious views being absolutely free to argue that it isn't and people being absolutely free to argue back and people saying it is simply a secular um, contract, others saying it's every bit um, as sacramental as a, as a religious marriage. You know, I've heard all of those arguments on British radio and television, so nobody's yeah, being... Yeah, British radio isn't quite as bad at the moment. But nobody's but... being unpersoned, are they? Well, no. Well, least of all, uh, it depends. It depends. I mean, some people struggle to get through to this show, you know, because they have the filter system you have there. What so, filter uh, system? You know, I don't go, have. I don't. Just, uh, well, I you think you are, truth. James. I don't have a filter system on this program, well, uh, other than other than the Ofcom yeah, rules, yeah. the law, and common decency. Those are my yeah, rules. Let's, let's, let's speak about the geezer you, you spoke about earlier from UKIP. He's a comedian. He's no different to Ricky Gervais or any of these other people. Yet. Because he made a joke three years ago, they're using it as uh, something to hit him with now. But it's a joke. No, but so hang on, hang on. In, in a press conference just a couple of weeks ago, when he was asked about his so-called joke, and frankly, James, as a woman, if somebody joked about whether or not they'd rape me, depending on my level of attractiveness or not, and then subsequently, when challenged about it, joked, in inverted commas, as to how drunk he'd have to be, whether there was enough beer in the world to rape me... I'd call the police. It's quite obviously a joke, isn't it? You know, you can is it tell James? The context and context is it James? Is Have you ever been sexually thing. assaulted? It's all about the Have context. Have you ever been sexually assaulted? 
no, not recently, no. Oh. Well, if somebody says they're going to sexually assault you and they're rating how you look as to whether it's a good reason to or not to, well, that's line, pretty serious, line, isn't it? I just block them straight away. Block. Goodbye. And that's how it should be. You know, people should have the freedom to to speak their mind. You've got to have the right to be wrong. But what I kind of person? Can... What kind of person wants to say? I wonder whether I'd rape that woman in the public eye. I wonder whether I'd rape that girl. Joke the... And in the context of the joke, when is that it's, funny? It's a very deep thing. On it, what it, level is that funny, James? You're not laughing. I'm not laughing. Jess Phillips wasn't laughing. Where is it funny to wonder whether you would rape a woman? And then claim to be a decent individual. Where is it People funny? People have got to grow a thicker skin. If you're going to put why? yourself online... Why should, why should anybody grow a thicker skin when somebody's talking about raping and them? And you're voicing your opinion to the world. Like that last lady who was on. I'm sorry, talking, love, you tweeted it out. Talking right, about... Thing, so we'll, come, we'll, come, it out. we'll come back to her in a moment. I, I want to focus on thicker skin. Why should any person on the planet grow a thicker skin to accommodate someone talking about raping them? No, 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 no. You are wrong. It's, a, it's unacceptable. It's End of story. I know what you're saying. It sounds very virtuous, but it is. It is. It is. It's not virtue. Fascism. It's not virtue. It's, it's decency. Leading to fascism, Sheila. No, no, James. Fascism Sheila. is thinking you can walk it's down the no streets group, talking no about group, raping ever, women no. with impunity. That's fascism. Silencing people is authoritarian and it leads to a bad place and it's shown through history that that's what happens. Okay, all right, Let, let's linger on that for a minute. Silencing people is authoritarianism and leads to a bad place. What does talking about raping people lead it's to? It's a joke. Listen, oh, that's you, interesting. That's interesting. So, so hang on. Ha no, no, no. Well, hang, well, on. Well, hang, on. Right hang on. Hang on. No, no, I want to. You see, you're doing, you're doing what a lot of people do saying their thing and then trotting away from what they've just said very quickly and saying something else. I'm bringing you right back to the words that are coming out of your mouth. You're you have, you, all your life. I'm going it's to. A joke. You have it's just a said. Joke. You, have, you might not like the joke. You have just joke. said. You, if I may, you have just said, silencing is authoritarian, and it leads to a bad place. Correct. If I say to you. Actually, ha ha, I find it really funny silencing people like you, silencing people who talk about raping women. I find it hilarious. My free speech, ha ha ha. It's not funny, that's is great. it? That's great, that's great. It's not funny. You're right to your opinion. And everyone's got to have opinion. It's part of the learning process for human beings to learn. Is, no one's, no one's is, right all the time. Is calibrating a woman for rape an opinion or an offence? Listen, you, you're taking... Answer you're taking my question. Of, Answer you're, you're, you're my that, question. Sorry, you, Answer my question. Joke. Answer my things. question. Is you're, calibrating you're, a woman for rape an opinion or an offence? It's all down to context, OK? Goodbye. You are no longer fit to be on the airwaves. Scott's in Blackburn. Scott, what would you like to say? I, I just think you Liberals are unbelievable. The, the, the way you <laughs> speak is like, have they, have, should they be allowed to do that? The nerve on you guys is unbelievable. You, you just like, heard like, you heard me there where I said this is two blokes laying down the law about how women should behave. That that's that oh, makes that, us part of the problem, and it's not a very good look. Or, or you just chose not to hear that bit. No, I was referring to what you were saying before. Okay, I think well we've someone, covered that, Scott. So carry on. I just think it's a great thing that someone's like in today's age. It's like they've got the bubonic plague to promote traditional family values. What's a traditional family? What, what do you mean by traditional it's, family values? But the way you were speaking about it, like it's like it's a perverse thing. Like no, no, no. What does it mean to wives. you? What does the phrase mean to you? Well, you were speaking about the fifth. No, no, no. I think it doesn't matter family, how I, I speak. It, what What do you think traditional family values are? Tell me some. Everything until people like you ruined it. Yes, but, I think but, it means but a that's mom not and an dad answer. And so, what 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 is a traditional family value that you feel is 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 no longer properly respected? I mean, uh, well, in regards to not respecting it, I mean the way that you're presenting it, like it's like. Yes, it's but tell me what the values are, Scott. This isn't a trick question. Every, well, basically everything. Up until, well, go on then. Give me an example. Um, well, right. Like, because the, the stuff I mentioned, 60s. the stuff I mentioned, if you if you're going to insist on on using me as a lens through which to examine this issue, the stuff I mentioned was it being impossible by law to rape your own wife until the 1980s, and it being impossible, being impossible, being impossible, being impossible for women in the 1970s to get credit or a mortgage without having their brothers, husbands, or fathers act as guarantors. Those, those were the only two examples I gave, and I'm I'm going to give you a break here and suggest you're not you're not cross the 
that's changed, are you? And who's advocating for that? Exactly. So but those are the only values I mentioned, you see. So I'm wondering which ones you refer to when you talk about traditional family values. Because you clearly didn't mean the ones I mentioned. So which ones did you mean? I don't think anybody ever portrayed them as such. But um, I, what I meant was, I like the idea. I think feminism has made women miserable. Yes, and all I, the I, I, I'm sure jobs. that most of the women you meet do very quickly become miserable. But the question isn't about that. The question is, <laughs> yes. what are the values that you are here to support? I think it's pretty obvious. Well, it's not obvious to me, Scott, which is why I've asked you 17 times. Okay, a traditional marriage. I mean, a mother and a father. I've just, I've been, uh, this, the nuclear family, I sort of said the 1950s and 60s. So you feel, you feel that the nuclear family is under threat? I think it's been denigrated. I think it's been... By uh, whom? Uh, by the way you started off this entire subject, by making it seem like this is a Me with my wife, thing. My, my wife, who I married in church, and my two children, we're, we're representative of an assault upon traditional values. Just talk me through that I again, said, Scott. I said the way, now, now you're twisting that. I said the way you started this conversation off. Which is why like I'm interested in what wife. you think. Can you name some traditional values that you feel don't exist anymore? You can't talk about the There's nuclear marriage. I think, well, okay, with regards to Scott, my wait, you don't know what you're cross about. No, I, really, I do, I go, do. Excellent, go on then. I'll tell you now. I said, I think there's social engineering going on. I think the opposite is true. The way stuff's portrayed on television and the radio... You just need to give me some examples the of the traditional values that you feel are, are, are under siege. You haven't mentioned one yet. By portraying them as somehow old-fashioned. That's what I'm saying. Portraying what as old-fashioned? The nuclear family, for God's sake. How many times do I have to say it? But how is it portrayed exactly as old-fashioned? I, I'm in one. I don't feel that but, it's old-fashioned yes, at all. But I'm saying, I'm saying that everything on the media these days is like, if it's not... Scott, you are on or, the media at the moment. No one's mentioned trans I'm except talking you. I'm movies. 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 So which, which movies have been ruined by having too many trans people in them? I'm not saying they've been ruined. I'm saying there's an over... <laughs> they're, they're over-represented for such a tiny minority. Which movie? Massively over... I'm not specific that. I'm saying well, you right, just name a TV radio. show then. I don't, I don't watch TV. I'm saying they are... Over-represented for uh, a tiny Mrs. minority. Doubtfire. Over Mrs. Doubtfire, is that what we're talking about? You mean the Robin Williams movie? Yeah. I, I wasn't specifically thinking of that. No, but is that, is that part of don't. the assault on traditional family values? Because I, I, I'm I trying to help you out. You so. can't actually name any. So, so. I'm, well, so give me because one that is. I wouldn't want to watch them. Because I wouldn't want to watch them. But, but you're I, furious I, I about the things you can't name, don't know, furious. and haven't watched. I'm, I'm not furious at all. All right. So should we have one more go at the traditional family values that you feel are somehow being undermined or dishonoured? I don't think. I, th I think that they are I being think that's the portrayed as old-fashioned. Yeah, portrayed okay. as old-fashioned. Right. That's what I think. Uh, okay. and, and out of place, and like they've got some kind of disease. If they want to retain that, and like when I ask you them. for the examples, we, we you say I don't know. I haven't seen any, but I'm sure that they're out there and they're all. Just turn on. Just turn on Sky. Or turn on the I've got it on regular now. media. I'm looking at. They've got a picture of Freddie Starr. Holding up yeah. to, to what else? What else is uh, just MTV? You new name it. M I think MTV. You know exactly and the social cultural engineering is portraying a tiny minority as being in the majority. But what a not. tiny minority of what? Gay people, trans people, people oh. who want to marry their sisters. You people who it. want to marry their sisters. I, I was in a cafe the other day, and there was a woman saying, "If it's no big deal, we now we used to think that gay marriage was a, a big no no, but now, so should we feel?" Um, uh, uh, upset towards in uh, brothers and sisters, and there's loads of it. Mark Dice has done loads of videos on asking millennials how they feel about it, and they don't have a problem. Can I give with you? It. Can I give you some advice? Yeah, stop going on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Because because you'd rather this... me stay listening to this program. But you People are like you. you are listening to this program, Scott. There's nothing else to do at this time of day. You could be, be watching your YouTube videos. I don't have uh, any data. I don't have it. I ran oh, out of data. Right. Okay. So. When, when, I, when... It starts on the 25th, when, if you must know, yeah. the 25th of the month, that's when the new data kicks in. So until then, I'm stuck uh, with people like you. Well, you're not, Scott. You could read a book. I've read oh. all the books I've got. All right, mate. Have a great day. I'm sorry, Scott. I really am, mate. I can't imagine. I cannot imagine the, the, the paucity of your existence to have arrived in a place where you're so, so cross about stuff that you can't even put into words. Just go out and make some friends. Seriously, don't sit watching your YouTube videos about because we've got equal marriage in this country, sisters will be marrying each other soon. Or, 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 or of course, you could run for the Tory party. Christopher is in Cannock in the West Midlands. Christopher, what would you like to say? 
Hello, James. Um, basically, my family have been in manufacturing for the best part of 350 years, dealing in every industry from the leather trade to the automotive, everything, believe it or not, from bondage gear to aircraft windows, OK? Now, I understand the European Union want to protect certain trades, so they protect wine producers in France, which, OK, fine, it protects those jobs. Great, OK? The leather trade in Warsaw in the West Midlands used to employ thousands of people, yeah? Nobody ever protected their jobs, OK? Then you've got the automotive industry. Now, you're going to say that in the European Union, we can protect the jobs and everything else. Well, the reality of it is, in the Czech Republic, the average wage over there for somebody working in the manufacturing industry, I believe, is about 12,000, whereas over here, it's 20,000. So, Johnson Control, British Air, Airbags International, all the big Lear Corporation, all these companies, up sticks from the UK, take them to another European Union country, and start manufacturing well, there. You, you, have a few, on you, you, you have a few examples of that, of course, and equally. Well, well okay. Why did I, Nissan I open in? Why did Nissan open in Sunderland then? Because they get huge grants from the from the UK, right? No, now, come on, Chris. Manufacture... Don't, don't insult your own intelligence. Why did Nissan well, open in Sunderland? What? I've been. I used to employ 125. I'm, I'm very proud of you, but just answer the question. Oh, yeah. If if it's as simple as saying wages are lower in you... Czechoslovakia, why were Honda okay, in Swindon well... and why were Nissan in Sunderland? Would you like to? Would you like me to finish? Would you no, like I'd to like give you some answer, I'd love you to answer my question. Yeah. I don't know those exact. Well, let's have a think then. Okay. Well. well, well, well you, just let's come up with a theory. Let's come up with a theory. Hour, no, no, it's you yours. Like this it? is your answers to my questions. That's that's how it works. So why is Nissan in Sunderland? Because they get huge grants, and they also. No, but, but you don't. That, that's not true, is it? Do you know what? And if, if they get if well, they get huge farmers. grants, Christopher, okay. if they get huge grants, let's pretend that's true. What you just said, it might well, be, you know and, uh, but, but that would cancel out the wage imbalance with the Czech Republic manufacturing plants, wouldn't it? You, you're just picking one thing. Now let's take farmers, for instance. I'm, okay? I'm picking the thing you said. You said automotive industry, didn't you? I didn't imagine that. Well, you, you'd be, you'd be, and, and, and then you said the Czech Republic, industry. yeah, right? I didn't imagine that. And then you said that's why they all moved there. So I said, why is this company in Sunderland? And you said something about massive grants. And I said, well, if that was true, that would cancel out your point about the wage imbalance, wouldn't it? Can we at least agree on, on recent history of this own conversation? When, when they... No, I just want to establish that we can agree that's what's just happened in this can conversation. I, can I say something, right? You wonder why people vote Brexit. It's because... People don't want to listen to the story. I completely they agree. I completely they agree. They just want to say stuff that's not true live on the radio okay, and, then, I, and then go off with well, their kind of head true. in the clouds. So let's try I'll again. Why is, is Nissan in Sunderland? I don't know, but I'll tell you what is well, you true. need to know because you're what so you certain of your own position that you need to... Otherwise, you're going to go away proving the point you just made. People vote well, Brexit you, because they I'll don't understand what. things I'll and they hate, they hate having it pointed no, out. No. But it, you're, you're picking one little point. No, you right? mentioned uh, the automotive industry. You yeah, did. And you mentioned wages in, in Czech. I was going to mention farming, but you wouldn't let me finish well, on that I, one, No, you? because your first point's fallen apart. Once we agree on that, we can move you, on to your you next one. What? You're talking absolute rubbish, James. I'm sorry. All right, so why is, Nissan, why is Nissan in Sunderland? I don't know about Nissan. All right, well, let's move on. Let's agree, let's agree to move on. So we'll leave the automotive industry out of it. Okay, let's, let's we'll let, yeah. I don't know okay. enough about the leather industry, so we'll leave that okay. out. I certainly don't know enough about bondage. So let me just play you what the economist that the ERG and the hard Brexiters love the most said about agriculture. This is Patrick okay. Minford a few years ago at our House of Commons Select Committee. And then, and then we'll move on to what you think. Well, I think that uh, it's perfectly true that if you remove protection of the sort that has been given in particular to the car industry and to other manufacturing industries inside the protective wall, you have got, a, gonna, you're going to have a change in, in, in the situation facing that industry. And you, you are going to have to run it down. And it will be in your interest to do it just in the same way that we ran down the coal industry and the steel industry. These, these things happen. I gotta be honest with you, mate. I didn't even know he mentioned the car industry in that clip. I'd forgotten. So the EU membership <laughs> under that analysis has protected the car industry. So now talk to me about farming. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, you know, I'm not a farmer and I'm not going to claim to be a farmer. But you did just say, let's talk about agriculture, right? 
Okay, okay. Right. I didn't imagine I'm, that. I'm like I imagine I'm the stuff about the automotive now. industry. I'm a layman, right? But well, no, because when you honest, came on, you were a, you were a manufacturer with 350 years of experience. How have you gone from that yeah, to yeah. a layman who doesn't know anything in the space of six minutes? Well, I, to be honest, I must know a fair bit. You know what I mean? Anyway. Why? How, what, what, how did you arrive at that conclusion, Christopher? I don't know. Well, you what know makes what? you think that you know a lot? You know what? You, you want people to ring up and put their point of view. No, 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 no. I don't want them to put Let's their point of view. Right, okay. I want them to bring the facts is, to the programme. The whole point is, the whole point is, the UK is one of the highest labour rates in the world, I would have thought, for wages. OK? So we have to pick niches. We're talking so about farming now, you said. The UN Yeah, OK. Where are we going to excel in the UK? We're never going to grow the cheapest bananas. We can't grow bananas. What we could do is we can do free range. People in the, my wife, for instance, free range bananas. She, cho she chooses to go and buy free range food. She wants food grown in the UK. She doesn't want it in Brazil. What, why we want to ship it all the way around the world? We're going on about. So we because bring the products people, in from because, China. Because the people well, selling bananas or, or, or fruit and vegetables to your, your wife who, who deliberately buys British sustain their yeah. business models by also selling fruit and vegetables to people who don't care where it comes from. They shop according to price. And if we leave the European yeah. Union without any trade agreements in place, either... Well, that's my point. Then if we're going to buy purely How can it price, be your point? Because it wipes out okay. the British the point, the point producer. Is the European the European Union oh, only man. chooses, the European Union only chooses to protect certain industries. No, it protects okay. all manufacturing no, and agriculture. Okay. Mate, okay, you started so why, with why the automotive industry, industry and it fell apart zero. so quickly. Now, it, it's rubbish. It's no, because, because, because the leather... Union, the leather industry oh, in the UK, in Warsaw, has completely gone. You might as well talk about lace in Nottingham. I mean, it, 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 it just... You yeah, may do, but you, yes. you're going on about the jobs in... In the automotive industry, right? That, in reality, those jobs are already going to Czech Republic. Most of them are already gone. Man, but we just said farmers. that's not true. I said, what but about you, Nissan in Sunderland? About, and you pretended yeah, it hadn't what happened. About, what about... Christopher, this is pointless. This is pointless. Yeah, every time, is, every time you say something, I, I show you that... the other industries oh, right, that mate. have already gone in the UK? They only choose to protect yeah. certain industries. It, yeah. the, the point is, if we leave and the UK is on its own... The UK can choose. Right. We need to protect steel. I'm late, I'm late for the never... news. We need to protect steel. Okay. You just heard the ERG's pocket yeah. economy. Okay, James. It's nice speaking to you. I'll let you go to your news. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Thomas Watts is here with the headlines. I don't want to dance on anybody's grave, but that, that is it, really, isn't it? That is that is the uh, crux of the issue. Uh, poor old Christopher saying, you ask people to ring in with their own points of view. I say, I don't. I, I describe what I think is reality. I would love to be removed from that perception. I'd love to have an understanding of so-called WTO terms that doesn't entail what Patrick Minford would describe as the essential destruction of, of manufacturing and agriculture. Uh, and then you ring in, you say some stuff about the Czech Republic, you get asked about the Nissan plant in Sunderland, your own point falls apart and you're still angry and still banging on about leather. Where, where in the European Union has, has the leather industry? It's been farmed out precisely to the corners of the world where there are no wage protections and there are no health and safety Legislations, and also, of course, I, I'm sure you know this, Christopher. With your 350 years in the in the industry, saddles aren't quite the market that they were during Walsall's heyday. In the same way that lace doesn't sell on anything like the scale it did when it was a staple of Nottingham's economy, you know. <laughs> and what what am I doing here, wondering how on earth you end up on national radio claiming that economic harm is worth it because of free range bananas that are going to get I don't know grown in the Vale of Lichfield. Mark's in Caterham. Mark, what do you like about it? Um, well, I, I prefer a WTO deal. There, there's no such thing as a WTO deal. Why not? Why, why, where, where am I going wrong? Well, WTO the, is a deal. No, it's not a deal. It's what happens if there isn't any deal. No, you're, you're trying to be obnoxious. It's a deal. Well, it's, it's not, not a no deal. So who it's signs it then? WTO is a deal, who, James. Who signs it? Who signs it? The British public sign it. Well, all of them. One vote, one person. It Did, breaks but the what European about the other monopoly. Half? Who, who else Pardon? signs it? Who else signs it? The general public no, signs it. But with it who? It's a deal box. with who? Between the British public and who else? 
with the rest of the world. WTO so they has sign it as well. the platform to trade with the rest of the world, including the European Union, who are bound So why is no one else doing it? They can if they, they want to. Why don't they want to? They haven't voted yet to decide. Maybe if you give France well, a referendum... Ever. ...and they decide to go world so trade no, organisation... No country on the planet trades on WTO yeah, terms. Yeah, but what's the why benefits? Not? Let's get back to the benefits of <sighs> why it's beneficial to trade on WTO when it comes to engaging with the European Union. A, Juncker's going to be replaced... And yet, one person, one vote, hasn't got the capacity to vote for the commissioner. Is that not true? I, I, we're talking about WTO terms. I don't understand where you think you've gone, mate. No, no, you're trying to... So how to, is being uh, on WTO... No, I'm not. The conversation is about how anyone could possibly be in favour of something, which all because analysis... Because it gives the British public yes. back Go on. the power to relinquish the price fixing that the European magnets are monopolizing the British economy by. Right. How, how does that, how does that work? Wages, wage constructions by the supermarkets. Which, super, which supermarket? All of the supermarkets, and that's not limited to food, food produce. That could be a car supermarket, a car, su a car supermarket? Yeah, i.e. Nissan. How many Nissan employees receive family tax credit? At the, uh, at the cost of the general public purse. I, I, give, I don't know how many. Nissan Tell me. Nissan is in profit, so that means Nissan shareholders... I don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm answering the question. I don't know. I'm admitting you I don't know. You haven't listened to what I'm stating. I've listened to every syllable. No, you I'm can tell from my this. face. What needs to happen is the National Crime Agency needs to go through the Chancellor of the Exchequer's front door right. and arrest him for stealing family tax credit money that's being siphoned out of the country in shareholders' profit. Okay. So it's being duplicated. So who's paying for these workers? The general public are paying. But the workers, the workers are the general public, aren't they? Exactly. Right. So they're being And W, just, just briefly, run me through how... So it's job share. We haven't got full employment. We've no. got job share. Just like run me through how, how things are going to get better after we crash out without any deal. Well, an EU Remain government legacy yeah. with Blair... Yeah, We've made no, but remember when been, you know that phrase. Been, I think I can no, help you a bit. No. You know that phrase. No, no deal is better than a bad deal. It's not. It's not. It's not English. Sorry. What's not English, Mark? WTO deal. No deal is is right. nonsensical. Is that not true? You can't speak English, can you, James? Uh, no. Yeah, I know. I'm glad you admit mais, it. Mais, mais, je sais. Should we try again? Oh, my let's, let's do it with you, OK? How is your life going to get better? What do you do for a living? Mm, uh, I'm a person of leisure. So you're unemployed? No, I'm a person of leisure. So you don't have a job? Yeah, I do. I do voluntary. OK, well, I, I applaud you for doing that, but you're not in paid work. And you find a national radio station to complain about the state offering some support to people who are. No, they're not. They're chaining no, them no, as you slaves. No, you did. You did. No, they're chaining yes. them as slaves. Right. They're so who pays your bills? Movement. Who it's pays your bills? Of movement how do you pay your bills? When you're in receipt of family tax credit... So how's... No, 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 scratch all that. No, carry on, for, carry on, carry on, carry on. How is your life going to get better? My children will be in an environment that is beneficial and not hostile. To, to whom? To my children. How is the current environment, environment hostile? This created. Are they immigrants? My children. Yeah. Part, yeah. So, that, that, so you're talking about Theresa May's hostile environment at the Home Office. I'm talking about the EU hostile environment. The government. So how is does a that work in the EU so what's, Union? What's going to improve? We haven't got how, a British government. We've got an EU directive. Uh, okay. So government. how how is your how, how will your children be measurably better off? Do you think? Not just in terms of money, but just in terms of, you know... In, in safety. In, in tangible safety. They'll be safer. Yeah, that's right. OK. Could, just briefly, how? Because I'd, I'd love to believe you. Well, what, what elements do you think Any. they're not safe? Uh, no, no, I don't think they're unsafe, mate. You do. 
Why don't you think they're unsafe? Because I don't know what you think the Wait, evidence is for their lack of safety. You've just Manchester Stadium blown up. Right. Yeah. A stadium in Manchester. Now how how, will, children not, how will not being in the murdered. European Union have prevented that? How would not? Yeah. I think you're being, I think you're being really, really daft. I, I accept that, Mark. But how would not being in the European Union have stopped the terror attack at the Manchester Arena? We would be able to get to the crux that non-Muslim terminology is a racist slur yeah. on British society. So which, which, which European fields, Union countries are Muslim? It cuts across all fields of society. Okay, Mark. The, the, the Can I ask you just once more? How, how would not being in the European Union have prevented the atrocity in um, Manchester? You're you're um, you're playing semantics. No, I'm James. asking you a really simple question. You told me well, your children no, will this, be more safe. Be, Let's just run through it. Just pause it a second, mate. You said your children will be more safe if we leave. I said how, and you talked no, about the Manchester the terror attack. Phase, so how, how will phase, not be the in the European? Phase, yes, we would be able to challenge the Kaba. We should be able to cordon Saudi Arabia. We should boycott okay, I'm going to leave Saudi it now, Arabia. mate. I'm going to leave it, mate. I'm going to wish you all the best. And, and I'm also going to say, if you're sitting at home thinking that a no-deal Brexit is a good idea and you're laughing at Mark or claiming that it's, he's been deliberately selected, he had at least the guts to ring in and defend his position. You don't. You're just believing what you've been spoon-fed by the snake oil salesman who led the country into this catastrophic state and you're letting them serve you pudding. I'm short of time, Matthew. I'll warn you in advance in Harpenden. But you're going to have the last word on this before we move on. What's it going to be? Yeah, it's, it's sort of what you've just you've touched on um, quickly. Is that the, the, the trade deals um, that we could we could the, the UK could um, impose um, temporarily? You can't, you can't yes, impose. Right. A, you can't impose a trade deal. Well, I mean, like sort of like um, tariffs. You can negotiate a trade. You can negotiate. Yeah, negotiate tariffs, etc., etc. Et if it's got tariffs, it's not a free trade agreement. Right, no, I understand that. But one thing is, the first couple of years, it doesn't matter however long it takes, it's a very small, small. Um, but I don't know. If you're talking about tariffs, you're not talking about free trade agreements. We just need to clarify that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm trying to say. So with, with, with tariffs that will be imposed both sides of the channel with, with regards to trading with Europe. Um, yeah, as soon as you impose, as soon as you impose one tariff with one country under WTO terms, you have to apply it to every country yes. on the planet. Yeah, but this is going to be a temporary measure until trade agreements are worked out. And what you've just trade mentioned agreements about with India whom? since 2007, trade agreements with a, whom? With, with as many as many countries who we choose to trade with. We've got about At 80. At the moment, we are, sorry. We've got about 80, 20 in the pipeline. Yeah, but what I'm trying to get at is, is that we can open, we can put the we can put the throttle down and then work out some more trade with other countries. Which so, countries? Uh, apart from well, the 80 be, that we've already got trade agreements with, because we're tearing well, those up. I don't up. know how many countries are in the world, but there's, what, there's well over 150, 160 countries so, in the world. So, so we're not even dealing with half of, What's top of your wish list? Would be top of my wish list? I don't know. Maybe something like Canada. We could work with. Um, Canada, you know, have, Canada have just signed a trade agreement with the European Union. Yeah. It took just like, it took about a decade to negotiate. Yeah, but this is what I'm saying. But there are. But how these, can that be like better than what we've currently got, Matthew? No, but we can work something out. We're the fifth we've, largest we've got economy 80, in the world. We've got 80 deals already in place and 20 in the pipeline. But and, why and we're the there? fifth largest economy in the world, arguably because of the trading arrangements that we currently enjoy. What through Europe? You think that we're the size of we're, we're the economy we are because of Europe? Well, I know that 60.7 percent of all our goods imports and 66.9 percent of all our exports are with the rest of the European Union. Yes. Yeah, but that, that's that's what I'm trying to say. We could we could expand so much more so that we don't yes, have to we trade could expand so much with, with Europe. We with could the trade 80 with so countries. many more other countries. Yes, the 80 countries outside the European Union that we already have free trade agreements with. Yeah, and then there's, there's the other side of it as well. Legislations that we have to follow. Our courts can't yeah. impose rulings without yes, um, name, without name, being name, pushed name, up to European Court law. of Justice as well. Name the law you can't wait to not have to obey anymore. Well, no, there's always things being pushed up into well, the European Court of Justice. Like with that, with that, what's that? I remember, what's that baby that they were trying to fight to keep the, the, this, this baby alive? Um, I've forgotten his name is now, but oh. last two years ago, that it went to European Court of Justice and we couldn't, the, the, you know, our own so, doctors... So what was the law there that, that you didn't opinion, like? Well, shoot, it's like certain, certain, like certain rights and things yes, that we have to right, abide though? by. What, 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 what right don't I, you I, want I, anymore? I'm not a lawyer, James, so I'm, what I'm trying no, to But you're on national is, radio trying to claim that you've got a basis for what you believe, and I'm asking what the basis is. 
Yeah, I'm just what I'm trying to say is we are like for instance, we, I remember a lot of people remember the 50 watt um, 50 watt posters and light bulbs. We can't, we no longer can um, use that, you know, keep, you know, make these sort of things because of the European Union. Certain things like putting um, ingredients in jam to make them more, you know, you know uh, which we made them more flavours, and we had to stop doing that because of because of the European Union, etc., etc. What, there what, are a lot what of ingredients? That we are being what ingredients? In, well, on, what, ingre Union. what ingredients in jam? I'm just going to. It was a colouring. It was a colouring in the so jam. So how does a colour make um, something more flavoursome? Well, no, it was the way it was made, and we were told well, so to change it, was, it yes, because it, was it health didn't fit with the European Union. Yes, legislation, they thought it was carcinogenic. 50s, sorry? They thought it was carcinogenic, usually, when we look at things that the European Union has um, sought to like, like A lot of the stuff that the European Union opposed on us, like our, our fishing grounds... See, it was an E-number, right? It was, a, it was an E-number. Some of them are approved yeah, by so the EU we, and some of them aren't. Why can't we? If a nation, if a nation chooses... If a, if a no, British you're right. Why can't we chooses... poison our population? Damn that EU for protecting us from the kind of stuff that uh, unscrupulous producers... Mate, you were eating horse meat three years ago, pal. You want to be protected from producers that would put horse meat in your lasagna or or do you want to just remove all the regulations so they can stick whatever you want in your jam or your lasagna or your pot noodles or whatever it is you're having for your tea norma's next in stuck on trent norma hello huh? what hello. do you want to say i welcome wholeheartedly donald trump coming here absolutely he's for this country and he's for his own country he's for his own country first though well obviously he lives there so why is he so good for this country? He's good for this country for trade. Because? Because he, he, he'll make deals. He's a businessman. Well, he's been bankrupt several times. Oh, good God. Yeah, I'm sorry to present you with the facts. That's Norma. Trump. I'm indifferent to him. He does lie. But he stops the worst alternative, and he frustrates the worst alternative. I'd include you in that. Okay. So it sounds a little bit childish, but I think people, they do need to step back and think, why do I feel the way that I do? A lot of it is social conditioning, and it is a chance to kick the other side, and I think it is... But then we're, back, we're back to football. Why are we on different yeah. sides? I, I, I would stick up for your wife when she was being attacked by racists. Well, so would I. Well, I know but you I would, so why, are we on, why do you think we're on different sides then? Because of the way you've been socially, the way you've been brought up, the people you met, the people who've influenced you, etc. The same with me, you know. No, I, I'm I'm anti-racist, and you've got an so Asian, you've got an Asian wife. So what 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 are the two sides you're talking about? The left and the right, I would say. I mean, to me, I with, don't with know what that means really, because you know, I'm I'm probably more critical of Jeremy Corbyn at the moment than I am of anybody in the Conservative Party. So what about it, the points based system? for immigration. To me, that's common sense. What's that to you? It, it, it can be common sense, but it doesn't really stand up to scrutiny in the context of the economic impact of immigration. And, and of course, we could already have introduced rules regarding what financial means and what work you had in place before we left the European Union. So that, that for me, is a red herring, but I don't mean that to to yeah, be sure. dismissive. It just doesn't actually, un under proper scrutiny, make sense. And Australia has a points-based immigration, and people like your wife would be subjected to even more racism there than they could potentially be here. But I don't... I, 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 I understand why you use the word sides, and I, and I yep. understand why you reach for left and right. Yep. But, but I, I don't know... I don't know who, who you think is on the other side when it comes to sticking up for people like your wife. I, don't I think mean. it's... it's what about policies. that breaking point poster, which was it's supposed to make us frightened of people coming here from the Middle East, regardless yeah. of whether they had any right to be here or not? Which side were you on with that? With people coming to... I, I, I disagree with it. One of the things... Well, I with the poster? The, the government... The government Did I you think disagree with the poster? Because the reason I despise that poster... Oh, I, dis I disagree with the poster, yeah. Okay, but you think you're on the other side to me? Um, I think that the government have got lots of answer for with immigration because what they did is, and I think Angela Merkel did this as well, she said, right, let's open the floodgates, but they did nothing to encourage integration. Well, we've got a mayor of London here who's a Muslim. You phoned me up to tell me that he, you're on the other side politically to me. Mm. You can't get much more integrated than being elected mayor of a country's capital city, and Donald Trump has chosen to attack him. So whose side are you on in that conversation? Well, I would say that the mayor of London should be concerned with the events of London. And so would I, but that's not what I asked. I asked who's, whose side are you on in that context? The, the fully integrated son of an immigrant or the racist American president? Um, I, I don't particularly like Sadiq Khan, and Donald Trump kicks him, so he suits my purpose. So you're on the side of the racist, against the um, Asian? 
No, I'm, I'm on the side of the guy who's against the other guy whose policies I disagree with. But no, I it's think nothing it's to just, do with policies. We're talking about isn't. Donald Trump's I... personal attack on Sadiq Khan uh, shortly after saying people should integrate more and pointing out that Sadiq Khan's parents came here from overseas. You can't get much more integrated than being elected mayor. He's Asian. He's been the victim of attacks from Donald Trump that have never been inflicted upon a non-Asian. And vice versa. For, no, he's, he, 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 Sadiq Khan has attacked Donald Trump for being far right, mate. And he is. I mean, that's, that's just a statement of record. He sympathises with the Ku Klux Klan. See, I, I think he that bans that Muslims. Is your wife right. a Muslim or is she uh, an Asian of a different religion? No, she's an Asian, actually, who gets a hard time from the Muslims. I don't want to go into the details. No, fine. But, but that's, that's, that, what side are you on? The, the side of the Asian or the side of the man attacking the Asian? Um, I'm on the side of <laughs> I'm I'm on the side of the guy who's frustrating the guy whose policy side. Yeah, disagree so you with. don't you don't care whether he's fouling or not. You're just glad that the other bloke's getting hurt. Do you know what? I think it's got down to as basic as that. James, I, I do. I, I can't believe your honesty, but you're not okay. you're not in any way embarrassed by it. Um, uh, it's it's just the way we are as people. So he's a mass, think, he's a liar he's a liar don't. and a racist, but he's hurting Sadiq Khan. So I like him. I think he's I, what I you've said. Can't, contrary to what Donald Trump says, is big and bad enough to be able to take That's that not the point, though. The I just want to be clear that I've understood you correctly. Donald Trump is a liar, and he's a racist, and he, he, he stokes up the sort of feelings that could see your wife being victimised. But you're on his side because he's hurting Sadiq Khan, who you don't like for whatever reason. If Donald Trump fr frustrates what I believe yeah. to be the detriment of our society, yes. And the detriment of our society is people not integrating, which is why, you, people... don't, which is why you don't like Sadiq Khan, who got himself elected mayor of our capital city. S Sadiq Khan is Labour, and he doesn't understand basic economics. Looking at the performance of well, Labour government jump, over you're jumping the year, around it would again. be disastrous. You're jumping around again, aren't you? Cause, cause, not really. Well, you are, because we're talking about the things, the words that you've said. Why do you like Donald Trump in the context of a battle no, with I didn't Sadiq? I like Donald Trump. All right, you talked about sides. Yeah, but you talked about sides. Yeah, I do. And I think that's what it's come down to. No, I think we you're right. Talk, we I, can I, talk about policies. No, I think, well, we can't talk about policies in a conversation about Donald Trump versus Sadiq Khan because D Donald Trump's impact upon... And also, Sadiq Khan has incredibly limited powers over the economic scenarios See, in this thing, city. But, I, I, mate, I'm not... I'm, not, I'm, I'm a gog no, with admiration no, no, no. for you. Well, admiration's not quite the right word. Gratitude. Because you were the Holy Grail caller I was looking for, and your honesty is really, really refreshing. But it scares the hell out of Though it. some of that money is not spent as there is a rush at the end of the year to spend it. We know uh, places have their own, uh, whether it's space programmes, we know airports have been built and actually the runways are in the wrong direction because of the winds. What we are saying is there are well, vulnerable... Where, where that happened? There, there are vulnerable people so where back at home. Uh, we, it's in one of the uh, 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 continents uh, abroad. We know we've got that uh, airport where the uh, we can't take off and land because of the winds, uh, the crosswinds there. But what we've got, Ian, is people in the UK who are the most vulnerable here. Well, Johnny's in Buckinghamshire. Johnny, what would you like to say? Uh, is this me? I don't know. Are you called Johnny? Yeah, I did. And are right. you in Buckinghamshire? Um, I... And ha have you rung LBC in the last 20 minutes hoping to get onto the James O'Brien programme? Yes, thank you very right, much. Right, then we've um, narrowed it down and I think it's almost certainly you. Marvellous. Okay, which of your points would you like? Whatever you rang in, about? whatever you rang in to I talk rang about. In to tell you. I, I rang in to tell you that the point of leaving a no deal on the table is a internationally accepted negotiating tactic. Which so what, what, previous, what previous international negotiation would you point to as a precedent for this? Um, I, one doesn't spring to mind, I'm talking through... But you said it was internationally recognised. I just want one example of where walking away from a negotiation involves walking to a completely new status quo as opposed to returning to the old one. Just one example, Johnny. Hang on, you, you're, you're misinterpreting what I'm trying to get across. The reason it's you're possible, but no unlikely. Um, no, I just want you to answer the question, because I like these phrases, like internationally recognised, and you sort of glibly deliver it as if that somehow uh, excludes you from having to explain what you mean. So if it's internationally okay. recognised, there'll be loads of examples of negotiations where two parties engage in discussions, and if one of them elects to walk away from those discussions without having arrived at a deal, they don't go back to the status quo that they inhabited prior to the negotiations, they go back to a completely new and largely unknown Wonderful. status quo. So what's the example you've got of that? Okay, great. 
unknown. Good. So the I example that, that you use to, to, to claim that it's internationally recognised, this tactic you describe, what okay, examples can you offer us? Let's move on from internationally recognised. Well, only if you admit, that, you it, only if you admit that it was a ludicrous phrase to you. No, OK, here we go. So, so it's not internationally recognised? Well, it's internationally Because no one has England, ever done it. America and Australia. Because, and because no one has ever done it. I, look, I'm not a historian. And well, then don't come on national time. radio and tell my listeners who are intelligent and deserving of a lot more respect stuff that you know to be untrue. No, no, no. Hang on. I'm, I was calling about your car analogy and going to a dealership and then leaving with a no deal or anything. Yes. That made absolutely no sense in what we're talking about. In well, the big mate, I'm not here. responsible and for your intelligence. Well, that's, thank God for that. Next, the point of moving into an unknown is because when we made the decision rightly or wrongly to leave europe we wanted to leave the control they have over us and also the other 60 nations or 40 nations or whatever who are not productive and basically rely so on 40 Germany, 40, England, 40 nations in the european union um, I, I can bring Google back up and work out the exact number. You don't GDP. need Google. There's 28 currently, of which we're one. So there are 27 other nations. And let's just pick and up on let's pick up on that word you used, control. So what is it that yep. we can't do at the moment that we'll be able to do when we don't have any trade agreements in place at all? Set our own customs limits. Set our own customs tariffs. Well, why do we, I, we why, can't, we why, can't do that under the World Trade Organization most favoured nation status. As soon as we offer or, or impose one thing on one country, we have to impose it on every country in the WTO. You can find this on Google. That's fine, but as a, as a sole trader and a businessman, you, we will still end up being able to trade. Where, you're, where we're forgetting no, is no, that the we question need is how will it be better? Uncharted territory how will it be better than so what we currently the world have? can change. So, so, sorry, so that the world can change? So that generally we can move into a new phase of even greater global trade and move right, away so from... By the, leaving, the by, by leaving the biggest single market on the planet, walking away from 81 established free trade agreements and countless other attendant arrangements and treaties, we'll be able to trade more than we currently do. We will be able to trade more than we currently do. Okay, Johnny. Yeah, I, 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 I think we use different I Googles. Solution. I think we use different no. Googles. So tell me the thing that, that, that is going to be the fly in the ointment of your plan, the reason why this, this unicorn land won't happen. Is it because of EU intransigence or lefties? The people who are negotiating on our behalf yes. are politicians and civil servants and people who are not... A like business savvy. Yes, okay? for example, people who know that there are 28 members in the European Union rather than people who think there are 40. We should have people who think there are 40 countries in the European Union doing the negotiations. Is that, is that what you're telling us? Because that's what I've taken away from this conversation. You don't think they know what they're talking about, but you can't even count. It's, it's a bit like Groundhog Day. Um, if we crash out of the European Union with no deal whatsoever, something it's very important we leave on the table, because although we know it will do us incredible harm, it will scare the other lot into changing their mind and abandoning their negotiating position of the last three years and somehow doing something else. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll be okay. Can you give me some proof that we'll be okay? Well, of course we'll be okay. We won't sink under the waves. But, but the whole point of Brexit is to improve the situation that we're currently in. So how can you improve the current situation by making it worse? Uh, whether you want to say short-term worse or not. How, can you how, how do you improve a status quo by making it worse? And I, I guess if you don't ask yourself these questions before you ring in, you end up sounding like Johnny in Buckinghamshire. And no one wants to sound like Johnny in Buckinghamshire. Brian is in Edmonton. Brian, you said you, you don't know a lot about politics, but you know a lot about negotiating. Yeah, I, I've been in sales, I suppose. Well, I'm not in sales at the moment, but I was in sales for 25 years. I spent 13 years selling to people face-to-face, um, -face, and I spent 12 years selling to businesses yeah. at, the very highest, at the very highest level. Um, my favourite sale by far was, and the most successful sale that I ever uh, ever had, and I used it multiple times, was, was walking away from the deal. Now, if you walked away from a deal, where did you end up? With the deal. Okay. If you walked away from the deal, you don't end up with the deal. If you walk away from the deal, you've got to be prepared to have no deal. You're familiar yeah. with the phrase no deal. It's, it's kind of informing the entire conversation in the country at the I, moment, I and can, so, certainly on this programme. No, I, I, no I, don't, I, want, I want you to tell me, if you end up with no deal at all, what was the status quo? 
I never ended up with no deal when I went to walk away from the deal. Never, not once. Okay. So would you like me to explain it to no, you? No, I, 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 I understand what you're saying. You're saying we're going to threaten to walk away with no deal and that will make the EU do what, more of what we want. I'm, I'm not talking about the EU. Well, why I have you phoned me then, no, Brian? Because, I, because you, asked about, you asked about why go in with a, a no-deal negotiation. No, no, not a no-deal negotiation, with no deal. And you phoned me up to say you never ended up with no deal. You're, you're the polar opposite of someone with something to contribute to this conversation. Yeah, but I always um, went for no deal. I always... It's a different situation in sales. It's completely always, different, you, Brian, which is the point I've been making all morning. If you are negotiating to flog fridges and you threaten to walk away but the bloke really needs fridges, he might invite you back and reopen negotiations because your situation situation doesn't change. You're exactly where you were before you started negotiating. If we walk away from the European Union with no deal, we are not going back to where we were when we started. We are going back to a country that doesn't currently exist, a country with no free trade agreements, a country with no customs union membership, a country with no single market membership, and a country that has literally nothing in the file marked free trade agreement. So do you see why it's completely different from all the sales negotiations you undertook in your glittering career? It really isn't. Okay. Well, you could have just said, no, I can't see it, James. Luke is in Old Street. Luke, what would you like to say? Hi. Morning, James. Hello, Always Luke. good to speak to a fellow Amphivolian. Carry on. Um, yeah, basically, I wanted to um, kind of ask you a question, if it I may. It doesn't really work um, like I want to ask... Well, uh, well, it, it's going to c continue on to probably a, d a little debate, so it's a good way of starting. Well, um, I've been asking I questions for ask... an hour and 12 minutes. Uh, all right, I'll let you ask, ask so, me so, a so question. So you, you I'll ring I'll in and answer the question in that case. Go on, then. Um, I, the, the, question, the question is, is there any benefit to Brexit at this stage? That, that would be my question. My answer to that would be... The benefit to Brexit is that we are we are now able to negotiate deals, trade deals, or preliminary trade deals, let's call them, with countries we wouldn't have been able to touch if we were inside the EU's jurisdiction. How many trade deals do you think we South currently Korea. have? Well, South, South Korea, we signed, the Infop, some, uh, signed a preliminary trade deal the other oh, day, God. and we wouldn't have had access to South Korea. We already if, do. Uh, they've, we just, still... they've rolled over the terms of the EU's deal with South Korea, Luke. It's literally yeah. a carbon copy of what had already been agreed between the European Union and South Korea. But is that, is that not a benefit to Brexit? Is that not a benefit? Mate, Brexit, mate, Brexit mate, you have, have to listen to the, not... the words that I just said. You said countries yes. we wouldn't be able to touch as European Union members. Yes. For example, South yes. Korea. The deal that Liam yes. Fox announced last week is a rolling over of the deal that the European Union yes. has with South Korea. Yeah, exactly. That's where you just said it. Did, the European did, did you, has to deal but with you South Korea, not Britain. You said it's we a are, country we're, we're we wouldn't be able to touch. We've already got a trade agreement with them. Then. Not in, not in. Well, look, we're a service industry. Did you really go to Ampleforth? Yeah, yes, I did. I, I think ask, your yeah. parents deserve a refund. Uh, Louis is in Uxbridge to steer us back towards Brexit. Louis, what would you like to say? <clears throat> Good morning, James. Hello, mate. Hello. There seems to be a lot of strong individual animosity towards deal or no deal individually but the issue we've got is we've got blithering idiots in the Conservative Party that only seem to care about uh, accelerating their own chance of survival. Now what they first of all need to do is consider Nigel Farage's letter to the PM which was to be part of the Brexit negotiations because let's be honest the Brexit Party, which I'm um, looking to become actively engaged in and visit the NEC in Birmingham on the 30th of June. Yes. Um, these guys obviously know what they're doing, so they must have the best negotiating tactics uh, on well, the table. Why, why obviously do they know what they're doing? Oh, well, because uh, Nigel Farage has been part of this uh, European committee for years. So which European table, committee? Sitting on the table and giving these people which table? a piece of... Just sitting on the table and giving Which them a table? Which the committee has he committee, been a member yeah. of for years? So moving back on to the point, I'd like to say is uh, Brexit means Brexit without delving into the political aspects upon it. Um, Boris so, Johnson... So without could, delving into the political aspects of Brexit? Uh, well, at the moment, yeah. Cause OK, I've, uh, I just, I've just if I can up. just steer I've you back... i woken up. Are you sure? Yeah, I have, yeah. Are you sure you've woken up? About half an hour ago, yeah. Well, I was okay, well, we'll, we'll take your word for it. Just steer me back to, to what you said about the committee that he's been on for 25 years. Which committee are you referring to? Uh, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. Oh. 
Well, that's yeah. unfortunate. It is a little bit, yeah. But what was the word you used to describe the people who, who were um, conducting the negotiations at the moment? Uh, blithering idiots. I mean, Boris Johnson yeah. couldn't find... What was the uh, name of that committee again? Well, there you go. I suppose it could be the same uh, steered in my direction, but there you go. Yeah. Um, but Boris Johnson couldn't find Uxbridge with a sat-nav, uh, and he runs this constituency which is falling to pieces every day. It's getting worse. It's just... Uh, and, it's and, just another... and how do you think leaving the European Union will improve conditions in Uxbridge, Louis? Uh, boosted back into the economy, money. How, how uh, would that? How would there be more money? In... Freedom of movement will be, will be controlled. Uh, job market will rise considerably. With, with uh, fewer people, there'll be more jobs. Yeah, it will. And Just talk, talk me I'm through not... the logic on that, because here, well, here's a finite number of jobs, and here's a finite number of people. If we reduce the number of people, then the number of jobs will go up. Just talk me through that. No, not reducing people and getting rid of them, but reducing. But what I mean by that is, yeah. right, I work in IT. In the IT industry, the market has become dead, and the the, the, the pay scales are decreasing. Yes. And that is because you can outsource people from elsewhere, for instance, the EU, who will come in and work for next to nothing and go home and, uh, you know... That's not, that's not really bank. true, though, is it, Louis? Oh, it, it is in my eyes. Listen, I'm, I'm but a if, big Just fan because it's true Nigel in your Farage, eyes... Like, like, does, does, well, well, of course I'm you're just, a fan of Nigel Farage, because you clearly don't know what you're talking about. That, that, I do that not. Goes without that. Saying, I've been stuck in this for ages. Oh, good. What was that committee called again? Oh, I don't know off the top of my head. So why mention it? Or get, feel well, free to consult the bottom of your head if it helps. As I said, I've just woken up. My brain's really scrambling. And as I said, are you, are you sure that you've woken up? 11.38, because I think you've just had an anxiety dream. Why was Nigel Farage wrong in 2014 when he said, enough is enough, let people tell their jokes? Why was he wrong? Let's start with Claire in Sidcup. Claire, why was he wrong when he said, it, let people tell their jokes? Well, I'm not talking about Nigel Farage, so firstly. Uh, Secondly, this left and right wing uh, uh, business... I am, Claire, is, and it's, it's well, my show. Well, actually, you were talking about Joe Bryant. Yes, but I opened it I... up with a quote and said, this is I true, isn't it? Let people tell their jokes. So why is that? Do you think people should be free to tell their jokes? Do you think Joe Brand has nothing to apologise for? I think, I think, actually, the show should be cancelled. What's if it called? Uh, I don't, I'll just come back from America. No, but what's the show called? The, the, you're calling for a show to be cancelled. What's it called? You must know a lot about it. All I know is that Joe Brown said something about... What's uh, the show called, Claire? Over politicians. What's the show called? I do think that's okay. No, what's the would show you, called? Would you like acid tongue over you? What's the show? What? Yes, she also <laughs> said Nick Clegg should be left face down on Hackney Marshes. I don't remember you ringing me about that. Well, I've just come back from America and I'm disgusted by it. What's the show called like, that you're disgusted by? This whole left wing, right wing stuff is absolutely crap. What's if the show? What's the bad, What's the show called? What the, the show you're disgusted by that you think should be banned? What's it called? Well, as I just said, you have just come back from America and it's all over the newspapers. So and I'm brilliant. So what? What did they call it? it? What What's the show called that you want banned? Oh my God, you're really crazy, aren't you? Go, no, it's not called that. Try again. Oh, my God. <laughs> and there you have it, in a nutshell. I'm absolutely outraged by this show that I've never listened to and don't know the name of because some people in newspapers and the media have told me that I should be outraged because it's some sort of left-wing conspiracy.